Hello, everyone. My name is Aaron Standard, and I'm the founder and CEO of Petabridge. And today I'm going to show you Phobos, our Aka.NET Enterprise DevOps Suite. I'm going to show you how to use Phobos' tracing capabilities to take data from a four node Aka.NET cluster and visualize all of that interactivity using Zipkin, which is an open source distributed tracing tool that was originally developed by Twitter. Now, if you haven't seen our introduction video to Phobos, I'd encourage you to take a look at that first, because it explains a couple of concepts we're assuming you're familiar with at this point. But the bottom line is that Phobos can work with lots of different tracing and monitoring backends. And this demo is to show you what that tracing data can look like in one of those systems, Zipkin. Now here's an example of the configuration we're gonna use for our Aqueduct cluster application. It looks pretty much the same as any other you know, Aqueduct cluster app does with a couple of exceptions. The first is we're gonna be using the Phobos cluster actorref provider defined in the phobos.actor.cluster NuGet package. If you wanna use Phobos's instrumentation alongside Aqueduct cluster, this is the package and the line of configuration that you're gonna to wanna to use to consume those. After that, we have our phobos.tracing hook on section, which specifies that the provider we're gonna use is gonna be Zipkin. And then on top of that, we're gonna go ahead and tell Zipkin that we wanna export all of its metrics using the HTTP transport, and we're gonna target uh, localhost 9411 as the uh, output endpoint for all that. Now, after we start our application, we're gonna be able to go ahead and start seeing traces show up in Zipkin right away. So let's go and take a look and what some of that data that's automatically captured from Phobos, because we don't have to write any code to get this data, let's see what that automatically captured trace data can look like for a big distributed operation across an Aka.NET cluster. So this is what the Zipkin user interface looks like. And what we're gonna do right away is I'm gonna go ahead and pull down the list of service names. Now I've restarted this application a couple times, so some of these nodes aren't part of the cluster anymore, but these two are a seed nodes and they're always part of the cluster. So I can go ahead and pick one of these seed nodes and I can go ahead and look for an operation inside our system. So for instance, these are the paths of different actors. And I can even see in this instance that looks like this node has recorded some dead letters. So let's go and take a look at the traces. So I can see these are all the different distributed operations where at least one dead letter occurred on this node in my cluster. So we've got some pretty big ones here. That's because the demo kind of generates some uh, randomly sized broadcast operations across the cluster. Let's take a look at one of the big ones and see what this looks like. So notice you can see lots of parallel time frames for work occurring across the cluster. That's because the way this particular application is designed is one node will go ahead and generate a request and it will go and propagate it to some of its neighbors, not necessarily all of them. And there's a small chance due to the way I designed this app that one of those messages we try to propagate will go into dead letters. And if I go and I take a look, I can go ahead and see the addresses of all the nodes participating in this operation. So I can see that node 2551 kicked off the very first operation in this trace here. And there's a total of 101 operations. If I drill in on it, I can see that the ping actor on localhost 2551 took about 32 microseconds to go ahead and process this message where we generated a brand new ping. And I can go ahead and see the type of message that we handled. I can go ahead and see what my path is in the actor hierarchy. And I can see who the sender is, which in this case, the sender is probably a nobody. Next, I can see that message traveled from the ping actor on node 2551 to the slash random actor on node 2551. If we take a look at this, you'll notice that this log message that I've recorded inside that actor was automatically appended to the trace data. That's one of the really useful features of Phobos is that anything that your actors are already recording using the built-in loggers, whether you're using serial log or anything else, will automatically be captured and reported inside the Phobos trace collection here. Then I can see from there that one of the actors that we sent that message to was dead letters here. So, and the reason why this message ended up in dead letters when it was sent from the random actor running on the same node is because we tried to send it to this actor path that doesn't exist, slash user slash fake actor. And I can go ahead and get a printout of what the message looked like here too. We're just calling the toString function on whatever the message object is. 
In addition to a copy of that message ending up in dead letters, I can see that another copy of that message ended up being sent to another node, localhost 2552. So I can go ahead and see here that I received this message from this remote actor running in another process. And I see the same printout that there were six remaining pings on this little ping 29 message here. And then I can go ahead and see this log message that I recorded and then I'm also using some of the C-sharp methods that Phobos exposes to manually log a couple of other events to this trace. But that's the gist behind how the Phobos tracing integration can work with a system like Zipkin. We're able to go and automatically capture these events as they're moving from one side of a cluster to another, including in this case, we're broadcasting copies of this message across as many as four nodes at once. And we can see all the work happening in parallel at any given time. So most of your operations as an end user of Rocket.net will look simpler than this does, but this is just to show you that we can capture really complex operations and make all of it available to you via a user interface like Zipkin or any of the other tracing systems that we provide. So that'll do it for our Zipkin demo for today. We hope you found this helpful. And in truth, the actor tracing integration inside Phobos is one of the most powerful debugging features that we've ever developed for Rocket.net. We would strongly encourage you to go and give it a try and learn more about it by going to our website, phobos.petabridge.com. Thank you very much for watching. We appreciate it.